toxic relationships, lies, deceit, and shameless begging. Today's first story really has it all. G'day there guys, it's your main man Marky, and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the arsehole. Now if you love today's stories, I want you to sit down, relax, and get ready for them, because they're going to be good. Let's go. Am I the arsehole for not helping my ex after he left our business? I, female 29, met my ex B, male 29, in college, and started a business right after our senior year. Our relationship often got toxic, but I think being business partners kept us together. Eventually, our business started having financial troubles. B comes from wealth, so I asked him to get a loan from his parents, which he agreed to. Two months later, B suddenly asked for all the money back. We were always planning to pay it, but we had mutually decided on manageable installments, and I was not in a position to return all of it at the same time. B said his father was very sick, and since he was in retirement, his health insurance situation was tricky. This seemed particularly odd to me because 1. B didn't give me any details on the sickness, 2. He didn't let me call his mother because she was grieving and couldn't talk about finances, and 3. Mum had more than enough money to pay for his treatment. Every time I tried to investigate, he asked me to trust him, and that's what I did. Getting the money back was an ordeal. We had already invested all of it in the business, and I had to take some out and even give away all my personal savings. About three weeks after this, B called me to tell me that we had done. He also wanted out from the business, and the only other time that I saw him was with lawyers when we were dividing our business assets, and he was withdrawing his name from all the official documents. I was devastated. In addition to the emotional trauma, I had virtually no finances to fall back on and moved back in with my mother for a bit. I never heard from B, and after talking to some of our mutual friends, who were on my side, I found out that B's father was not actually sick. I wasn't surprised. Five years later, I never gave up on my business, and slowly it grew and helped me pay back all of my debts and live a comfortable life. I heard from some friends that both of B's parents passed away, but I didn't pay it much heed. In the midst of the lockdown, I got an email from B. I knew this was not going to be good, but I responded, guided by my curiosity to know what he did with all the money. His parents had cut him out of their will, and he had a child with a woman who abandoned them. He also got laid off because of COVID, and he told me that he was struggling to feed his son. He told me that since he was instrumental to the business foundation, he deserved a cut from it now that it was successful. When I asked him about the money, he said his parents were pressuring him, which I did not believe. They were always on board with his frivolous purchases, and knew me well enough to tell me if they wanted it back. I consulted my lawyer, who said B had no legal claims to the business, but when I told my best friend about it, she said that she was appalled by the fact that I didn't give it a second thought, especially because he was responsible for the business idea, and his initial investment was twice as much as mine. She thinks I'm an asshole, so I'm here to find out. And my reply to that friend would be, actually, you're the asshole, and you're an ignorant idiot if you really believe that. Get out of whatever cave you're living in and realize that he's just begging for money here and he deserves nothing. OP, you don't deserve to be gaslit from your friend over your ex's begging. That's never a good situation, but you're not the asshole for this one. Now in the comments, Honest Elk says, That's a clear not the asshole. Congrats to you for persevering with the idea long enough to make it a success. Exactly. Very clear not the asshole. No idea why any friend would suggest otherwise, actually. And OP replies, I met her through him. She says she's always liked me more and hasn't spoken to him since the debacle. But I don't know how true that is anymore. I mainly consulted her because she knew the entire story thoroughly, but now it seems like she has a massive conflict of interest. But you divided up the business, and presumably, as you had lawyers, there was an agreement in there. He chose to pull out of the business at that time, and now has no claim to it. If the business went belly up, you couldn't make him liable for the debt, and he can't claim profit that he has no share in. Not the arsehole. Exactly this. So he deserves a cut if the business succeeds, but not if it fails. He made his bed, let him lie in it. Someone else comments, 
He lied about his father being sick. He's probably lying about the child. Do not let your friend guilt trip you. And OP replies, the guilt trip is spot on. My friend told me that since I struggled financially at some point, I should have empathy because he is in the same situation now. He hasn't changed or he would have reached out to you to apologize at some point over the years. He is only reaching out because he wants money now. It's highly doubtful his parents didn't leave him money. He is a liar. If his son is hungry, there are tons of free programs for food during the pandemic. I get emails weekly from school kids about resources to free meals. And Chutson says, Your best friend sucks. You are not the asshole. You don't owe your ex at all. You did the work, so you get to reap the rewards. And OP replies, She usually tries to play the devil's advocate, but I think this time she took it too far. If she was playing devil's advocate, she'd just say, oh, he's broken desperate, that's probably why he's asking. Not, I'm appalled you're not letting this mooch take advantage of you. And now on to the update. It's been some time since I posted this, but I wanted to thank all of you for steering me in a clear direction. The volume of responses was overwhelming, and I'm sorry for not getting back to all of you. Now for the update. My ex does really have a son, and I was able to verify this. I also found out that he wasn't cut out of his parents' will, the money simply just wasn't as much as he was expecting. Even though he did lose his job, he had a lot of fallback money. I also forgot an important detail in my first post. I recently did an interview in a local newspaper about my business, and my ex may have read that and found out that my business was doing well. Since he didn't need that money, my only explanation for why he reached out to me is that he felt entitled to my success and the money that I made. Now, about my friend. She admitted that he reached out to her before he emailed me. But later, after some coaxing, she told him that they had been speaking casually for some years. I'm not the most confrontational person, so I cut her out of my life, and yesterday, I found out through Facebook that they're engaged. Well... One last thank you. I am admittedly a gullible person, and you all helped me not get played. Now in the comments, quote, yesterday I found out through Facebook that they're engaged. Oh, this actually made me chuckle. Sounds like they deserve each other. Choo choo, train wreck coming down the track. Congrats on the business success and in not getting sucked into their scam. Sounds like you've learned some valuable lessons without too much long-term damage. What a crappy friend, though. She wanted to coax OP into giving her future fiancé money. Yeah, a couple of con artists, those two. I really hope things go better for you, OP. I'm glad you got that toxicity out of your life. Stay safe, OP. Your ex and your ex-friend deserve each other. Congrats. I know, right? OP, you deserve a partner who will cherish and love you forever. I really hope you find that be it a romantic or platonic partner. And OP says, Thank you, kind internet stranger. Oof. Sounds like you seriously dodged a bullet. Don't sweat it, OP. The trash will take itself out. It actually sounds like it already has. Your ex and ex-best friend deserve each other. Karma will catch up with them for the stunt they tried to pull. Congrats on your successful business. I hope it and you continue to prosper and that you keep moving on to bigger and better things and relationships. Our next post is titled, Am I the asshole for not giving back my cousin's dog after babysitting it? I, 21 female, have been watching my cousin's 29 female puppy for just about two months now. My cousin adopted the puppy, her name is Delilah, from the shelter two-ish months ago. My cousin at the time was living in an apartment complex that didn't allow pets. My cousin was aware of this, but decided to get the dog anyway. Surprise, surprise, she gets in trouble with the building a few days after adopting Delilah. They tell her either the dog leaves or she moves out. My cousin talked to different members of the family and asked if anyone could watch Delilah while she looks for a new place to live. Nobody was able to take the dog in, so I offered to take her because I didn't want the poor thing to go to the shelter. I go to pick up Delilah, and my cousin doesn't have any supplies to give me. Just what is left of the dog food and her tags. Whatever. 
I take Delilah to where I'm living and get her settled. I go to the store and I get her a collar, leash, bed, new food, bowls, toys, etc. I'm spending my money, but I don't care, because I want this puppy to be happy and comfortable. A week passes, and then more weeks pass. My cousin doesn't communicate with me often. I try to check in with her, and she says she's working on finding a place. After several weeks, my cousin said she has found a new apartment to move into. She sends me the info to show me. It very obviously states that they do not allow pets. What the hell? I point this out to her and she insists that they might change their mind since Delilah is so well behaved. I was the one who had to train her since she was living with me. I don't hear from my cousin for a while again. Here we are now, about two months later. I am absolutely best friends with this dog now. I love her more than anything. She's a quick learner and an absolute sweetheart. We've been on vet visits, I've been grooming her, spending my own money on everything she needs so I can take very good care of her, and my cousin contacts me a few days ago and says that she's ready to take Delilah back. She tells me about her living situation and that she's living with her boyfriend and his buddies at their place. To make a long story short, they aren't a good crowd, and I didn't think that it was a good idea for Delilah to live there. I told my cousin that I was sorry, but I felt uncomfortable sending Delilah there, and that I've been caring for her and spending all of my own money on her for two months, and frankly, I wanted to keep her. My cousin was disgusted with me and called me a lot of swear words which I will not be repeating. She hasn't spoken to me since, but hasn't made any attempt to get Delilah back either. I've been getting messages and calls from other cousins and aunts calling me a thief and saying I'm a horrible person. Am I the asshole for not returning the dog? Also, I'm not worried about legal trouble. My family wouldn't do that, and let's just say they don't have a good record with the law. Edit. My cousin has a track record of adopting animals and then sending them back to the shelter or just getting rid of them. I don't know what happens to them. She's been through multiple dogs and cats. This is why I am uneasy. Also, I would just like to point out that I have openly told my cousin I would like to keep the dog. I didn't say anything like, I'm keeping her and I don't care what you say, or anything like that. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I very well could be the asshole because I told her I would babysit her dog, but now I'm wanting to keep her. Now in the comments, LOL says, Everyone sucks here. Your cousin sounds insufferable, trying to bend rules because she feels special, but at the end of the day, you agreed to watch over her dog, and you're kidnapping the dog now. So that's clearly an asshole move. Honestly, in your place, I would eat being an asshole and hold on to the dog, with whatever fallout that might cause, but that's rough and might cause a lot of fallout. And OP replies, I originally mentioned this, but had to delete it due to character count. I don't see or speak to that side of the family very often at all. We see each other maybe once a year, and we don't talk much. Then say fine, you'll give Delilah back when cousin reimburses you for the still continuing expenses that she left you high and dry for. Have an itemized list of her food and shots. She'll obviously renege. Plus pet care. Do some research and find out how much doggy daycare costs for a total of two months. Add that to the food and supplies and vet fee bills. If Delilah is her dog, she isn't, that's your dog now, then you've been providing pet care and should be paid for that service. Not to mention the training. Poetry up in this biatch says, I think this is an everyone sucks here by the letter of the law, but I'm gonna vote not the asshole." Delilah is your sister's property legally. She put Delilah in your care with the expectation she'd receive her back when finding a place to live. You've had Delilah for two months now and have likely gone through several developmental milestones with her. You've trained her, spent a great deal of your own money on her care and needs, and for all intents and purposes, she is your dog now. My wife is a vet. She sees firsthand how many people abuse and neglect their pets. Your cousin has a track record of returning animals and behaving extremely irresponsibly. There is a high likelihood that, at best, she will simply keep Delilah and provide food and water with little thought for her needs. 
I would argue that it's more likely she will be neglected and eventually either be returned to the shelter as a much more difficult to adopt out adult dog with all the training you've done long since forgotten or returned or euthanized at the first hint of any medical issues. So technically you're being an asshole, but at the same time you're doing it for all the right reasons. Thank you and give Delilah a head scratch from me. And edit, also just to be safe, I would get the dog microchipped and registered to you ASAP. If your county has licensing requirements, typically requires a rabies vaccination, get that done ASAP as well and establish ownership that way too. And now on to the update. It's been a few days since my original post, but a lot has happened, so I figured I would give an update. First off, I pretty much made this account and posted on a whim, and I was really only expecting a few responses. It's safe to say I was surprised by how much feedback I had gotten. I'm not really familiar with what the typical amount would be here, but I wasn't expecting much. So thank you to every single person who took the time to give me their input, no matter what that was. I really did appreciate it. On to the most important part. I am officially the owner of the dog. To make a long story short, I had a few talks with my cousin regarding all of my concerns, and we both decided that the best option was me becoming the official owner of the dog. She even admitted to me that it took her so long to get back in contact with me because she wasn't sure about taking the dog back in the first place. Imagine my surprise to hear that. So yeah, the dog and I are very happy, and I'll proudly claim my label as an asshole this time round. And yes, I am going to legally be the dog owner, don't worry. I offered to pay my cousin for the adoption fee, but she declined, and wouldn't take the money because she said that I had done so much already. My offer will still stand if she changes her mind. Also, in my first post, a lot of people urged me to contact our local shelters and give them information about my cousin. I felt quite stupid reading all those suggestions because it's such a good idea, and I honestly can't believe the thought never crossed my mind before. So thank you to everyone who told me about that. It's getting done ASAP. I know this isn't super interesting or detailed, but I thought giving an update might be nice. Though, as I'm typing this, I realize I don't exactly know how these things work. And again, I really just wanted to say thank you to everyone on the original post for all your comments and feedback. There's nothing much else to say here, but it is a happy ending. Thank you all again. Now in the comments, Count Spunkula says, quote, my offer will still stand if she changes her mind. Does she have kids or a debt or something like that? Just take the money you said you'd give her while you're financially comfortable and put it in a saving for her kids or something. Don't let this open offer for money become a source of tension in the future. Tie up loose ends and be done with this forever. And OP replies, That's a good idea. We are still handling all of the loose ends, so I figured I would keep the offer open until everything was completed and settled, but giving it to our kids in some way is a really good idea. Thank you for that. Yay, happy ending. Given how well that conversation went, I think you might reconsider talking to local shelters about your cousin if you can get through to her by just talking to her. Disagree on this, just because the cousin gave back this dog does not mean she won't get another. I've rescued too many animals to think otherwise, but yay OP. And OP says, yeah, I'm definitely tossing that idea around. My conversations with her though weren't very enlightening, as if she had a sudden change of heart. She just couldn't decide if she wanted the dog or not. I'm definitely going to think about it though. And someone replies to that, I roll. I would just stick to blackballing her from the local shelters. If she wants a pet that bad, she can maybe dog sit for Delilah and actually get a sense of what it means to be a dog caretaker, or maybe try fostering. That's better than full on taking on a dog and then abandoning it. She didn't even know she wanted the dog, but lashed out at you for not trusting her with it? She basically got mad that you agreed with her that she sucks as a dog owner. Cousin seems to take significant convincing to do the right thing though after doing the wrong thing either on impulse or being too much about herself. She wasn't sure about taking the dog back, but then made up her mind enough to get hostile to OP when OP refused, only to get talked around finally. Maybe she'll settle down in time, but that time is not now, and if she doesn't try to get another dog, it won't matter that she's blacklisted.
Anyway guys, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you did like it, tell me what you thought about it down in the comments below. And make sure to just interact with everyone in this community. I love each and every one of you that I get to see on a daily basis. And don't forget, if you are a Patreon subscriber, I love you. You're on the screen right now with the YouTube members as well. If you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. You guys help me continue this YouTube journey. You keep me going. I see you guys everywhere. I see your messages and thank you so much for supporting me. I really love every single one of you. But with that all said, I'm going to be signing off now, guys. I hope you have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.